Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here in the DKIT Sports Complex with Darius Kearns. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about your career in general. Um, no thanks very much for coming on also. No problem. Um, so just in terms of your career, you were playing with Drogheda and then you had a knee injury and it brought your career to an end. How was how that to take for, for a young player? I'd done a lot of sports probably when I was younger. Um, Gaelic and boxing and obviously soccer. Um, but it's hard. I played at Belvedere there in Dublin when I was 16 and I had my first knee operation there. So from um, 16 I had another operation at 17 and another, another operation at 19. So I was more or less finished by the time I was 20. Um, three knee operations, so young. So it's difficult to take at the start. It's obviously football is your life and sport is your life. And come the age of 23, 24, you're not able to to get around the pitch or train or, or anything like that. So at the time, it was very difficult to take. Especially knees would be the most vital part of your body for, for a footballer. Yeah, I think once you, you have an operation or you're cut open so young, um, uh, you know, your effect, you're probably never the same player. Um, you know, even a break of a leg can damage a player as well. So, but look, that's life. That's what happens too. You have to get on it. Yeah. And how did you get into coaching then from that? Um, there was Chris Bourne was a friend of mine. He took over Draw United, um, and they were starting to invest uh, money into it. And the youth set up the for licensing kind of come into clubs where you needed youth setups for licensing and. He kind of rang me and asked me would I get involved, I, was, I think I was 26 at the time, and I'd take over the youth set up at Rory United, so it was something that interested me anyway. Um, then I started off, I took over the under-18 team and, and we went from there, I was there for maybe um, three years, I think four years, worked under Paul Doolan, um, and then Alan Matthews after that, so they were good times at Rory as well, did won the league and stuff like that, some Tanta Cups and FEI Cups. And in terms of yourself, then you went on to win the was it the under seventeen treble? Yeah, we won the under seventeen FEI Cup. Now, first year we beat them in the final, and then with the next team the following year we won the FEI Cup, the league, and the league the league cup. Um, yeah, so they were good times. And how was it then from, from going from that to being? There was a caretaker manager. Then you, you came in. Yeah, well, Alan, the, the club went into liquidation. Um, he had a business plan that that kind of didn't come to fruition and obviously the country hit recession so the, the club went into liquidation and um, Alan Matthews came in and took over, it was a difficult time and Alan was there for a year and a half, he, he actually initially done quite well Alan um, but what he had to work with and then Alan was, um, I, I think he he parted with the club in mid-season, I was managing the under 20s and I came in and took over for a couple of games where initially we done quite well in the first few games we, we drew at Rovers who actually went on to win the league. I think we beat Bray and, and beat Bray and beat Pats actually. So um, from there then the club wanted me to stay on. Um, I had only got BA licence. And now I think and that, at that time you needed the A licence and I was two managers. Yeah, I think you needed the A licence that time and I was I wasn't I was doing it but I hadn't completed it. I had to do my final assessment so the FEI um, wouldn't let us, wouldn't let me take over, so it, it got a bit awkward and a bit messy. Look at was that when Brian Donnelly then came yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. The club tried to get someone else to come in with me still managing, but look, at it wasn't ideal. In hindsight, I should have stepped away from it. Um, I done okay. I got in and got a couple of results, but it was my hometown club. We wanted to manage them. Um, you know, we wanted to do well and try and keep them up, but. Um, it didn't work out and I couldn't do it so that was it How was it being so young managing the team I imagine you would have had a few players older than you as well in, Yeah there was most of it I think there was a lot of players older than me <coughs> Did they take to you well or was it yeah, a case you know, where you well, had to earn their them, respect you, Oh you have to earn listen you have to I think you have to earn respect anywhere um, the fact that you haven't played in the league so long you might think that you haven't got like maybe a player a fellow who's played in the league longer has an instant sort of respect um, but I think players know you either know about the game or you don't or, or your coaching methods or your, your, your man management methods or your, your way of dealing with people I think you just earn it respect isn't something you should go and look for for me it should just be it. something that comes natural in time you know? yeah now you, how was it then going from Drogheda to Royville Dundalk then yeah we got a lot of stick for it <laughs> but um, now Ian Foster was managing Dundalk and 
Ian, um, Ian rang me and asked me to come in as assistant manager. Wayne Hatswell was Ian's assistant and he was going back to England. So, um, yeah, listen, it just suited me at the time. It was it was the right job at the right time. Dundalk is a massive club. Um, and Ian was someone I get on really well. I still keep in touch with him. Um, Ian was young himself. I, I think at the time I may have been 32. Ian was probably 35. Even though he looked a lot older than me, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, he was. Uh, look, it was uh, for me. It was work, and it was going to a big club, so the rivalry didn't bother me. Okay, and like, is it mad to see? Because obviously you were there, and it's well known about Dundalk were days away from from closing stores to where they've gone on that big European adventure. Uh, what, what's your opinion on it? Well, listen, it's. Uh, I think. From Dundalk is, is is probably the biggest club in the country, along with maybe Rovers. They've the biggest history in the country, and um, you know Cork City. They're the three clubs, I think, fan base wise as well. So to be on the brink of closing when I was managing, it was a, it was a it was a lot of pressure, even though it wasn't my team as such. But um, we were called in for a meeting, and I, it was maybe seven days away from closing at the time. There was people jo- people's jobs at stake, which is which is very important as well. You've livelihoods, people have families. Food and the table office. as well. Yeah, um, in relation to the squad, we had a young squad, who so were maybe not many men that were married or had children, but it's still their jobs and the livelihood. People in the office had families, um, people in the staff had families. So it was about kind of keeping the thing going as well as keeping a massive football club alive, a club that's deep into the history. So it was massive pressure, but the fans got behind the club and rallied around. We let eight players go, which wasn't easy. Letting eight players go and trying to keep, like, you've you've got teammates there, and you're trying to you're trying to build a team spirit and a, a group dynamic, and you're letting eight players go. Yeah. So it wasn't easy, but we signed players in amateur forms. Initially, it was about keeping the club alive. So and luckily. We stayed up. A bit a similar bit. to Shelburne and it kind of in a way. Yeah, listen, it's a lot of clubs have gone through it, you know. Um, it's, it's something that has occurred in the League of Ireland regular, and you know, it's it's people's jobs again. It's not like where you know some of the bigger leagues in, in Europe where people have money saved, they're on big contracts, they're on big money, and they've plenty of money there. This is people's jo- jobs on Monday to Friday, or, you know, Saturday, Sunday. It's it's the livelihood. They have to pay their bills if they're out of a job. That the family suffer. Yeah. So to go from there to where they've gone to now, it's great to see it. But I think the owners of the club have to take massive credit for it. Um, funny, funny we have sold the club today, but you know they they were two fans, um, Andy Connolly and Paul Brown, two fans that took a chance. And I wouldn't say they took a chance because they didn't get into it for money. And I know that myself. They got into it because they were fans and they wanted to save the club. They invested money in it in the middle of a recession. So, to see them sell the club today to American owners and and who looks it's going to be a good investment for our all concerned, and um, I think it's great for the league, and I'm delighted for the two boys as well. Do you think now that maybe Dundalk can get into Europe regularly and it might bring a, a bit more money into the league? And do you feel it's good for the league that that, that they're getting the title? I think it is good for the league. Yeah, I think um, I think Dundalk. I don't think no one's going to waste money or throw money. Dundalk have been very prudent with their money. They haven't given out big massive contracts when they got money from Europe. They've, they've kind of stayed at the, I'm sure with their budget in, the, in terms of, you know, themselves, Cork, probably Rovers. But I don't think they're going to go splashing money. But I think it'll, it'll enable them to bring in maybe the right couple of players to, to, to win, maybe win the league again here next year. And there's no guarantee. You're playing top teams in Europe that have much bigger budgets. So there's no guarantee of getting into the Champions League or the Europa League proper. What they've done to have achieved now has been brilliant. Um, but there's no doubt, I'm sure that's where they're looking at it. The American company, that's where they're coming from. They want to get into the Europa League, the Champions League, and maybe go from there. Yeah, well, that'd be massive for the league. So would you say the, the highlight of your career then would be to keep them done dark up? Yeah, I would think so. Um, having success underage is, is, is nice and... I won two EA Sports Cups as a culture of Pats, but it's a different pressure. A relegation battle is a different pressure, I think, and to keep them dark up, maybe in the circumstances, um, yeah, I, 
I felt under a lot of pressure myself. I never slept probably for three months, but um, it is what probably would be the highlight of my career for me. Yeah. And to see them doing great now, it's, it, I'm delighted to see them doing well. And you know, you look out for the results as, as I do for Royal United and, and your previous clubs. Um, but there's no doubt it's great to see them doing well. And it probably was the highlight of my career. Yeah. Okay, and you just as you touched on Pats there. So uh, how have you enjoyed your time there? Yeah, it's three good years with Pat, um, working with Liam. Liam's obviously been very successful and, and um, he's a great way of playing. Um, you know, he plays a good passing game and he never he never differentiates away from it. He's, he's um, you know, he's a very courageous manager, Liam. He believes truly in the way he plays and I've had three good years there. We won the EA Sports Cup twice, played in Europe last year. It was, was different, we, we didn't do so well with a relegation battle. But it was nice to stay up, and we done really well in the last um, round of games. I think we got 19, 20 points maybe. And if you had got that in the previous two round of games, it would um, it would have brought you up to toad. But we started so bad. But no, I three good years, great memories. The fans have been brilliant to me up there. The people in the club, um, all the staff, players, Liam, three good years, and you know. So. Okay. Well, what's next for yourself then? Uh, in, in football terms. Um, I'm having the operation in the coming months, so. Um, that's going to probably put me off for a bit. I'm going to be doing a small bit of work, um, match analysis and stuff like that for Neil Fenn in Longford um, and hopefully get my knee done and come do the pro licence this year. All going well and I'm looking forward to getting back involved but just for now I have to get my knee sorted out. Oh, perfect. Well, uh, I hope you get your knee sorted out and the uh, operation that goes smoothly. Um, thanks very much for coming down and oh, uh, help, giving us your time. Much appreciated. No problem. Um, th- guys, if you like this video, if you can give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, if you like this video or would like to see any other ex managers or managers in clubs at the moment, let us know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Paul Neal.